Hi, welcome. Here's your HMH lesson for today. Um, this is HMH lesson 7.3 for Friday, um, February 5th. So we're going to be reading the story, I Am Helen Keller. This story is in your new HMH books on page 14. So if you don't have your books out, please go ahead and get your books out, open them to page 14, and pause the video now. Okay, so now that you're back and everyone has their books, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be reading a biography today. Biographies tell about real people's lives. So this is Helen Keller is a real person, right? As we read I Am Helen Keller, we're going to be looking for events in order from the earliest to the latest. Information about why this person is important and ways the person has made a difference. So read to find out the most important ideas in each part. Then we're going to synthesize or put together these ideas in our head to find out what the text really means to you. So that leads us to the word synthesize. When you synthesize, you put together information from different parts of a story to see the author's ideas in a new way. So um, it synthesizes like important ideas, this important idea, it's like a puzzle piece, putting all the important ideas together to come out with the big picture, the big idea. What does it all mean to me? Okay, before we start, um, get started with reading, let's go over some important power or vocabulary words. So deal, we talked about deal the other day. Deal is when two people um, can get along or come up with an agreement on something, right? So if they get along or they're agreeing on something, they've made a deal. We have the word figured. Um, figured, it, we have two kids and they're having math, they're writing math problems on the board. F if you figured out something, you came to understand it. So, oh, I figured it out. So you came to understand it. You started, you're starting to understand it now. Okay. Um, and that's why sometimes when you guys um, ask me the same question a hundred times, I tell you, figure it out. So figure it out, that means if think about it for a little bit and then you'll come to understand. All right. Uh, let's look here. Communicate. We have um, the two people here communicating and it looks like sign language, right? So to communicate is when you share information or ideas. So they're sharing information or ideas with each other. They're communicating with each other, not through voice, but through signs, through hand signals, right? Uh, communicate, good. All right, let's keep going. We have motion here. This woman motioned um, us to come, right? So motioned is when you move your hand or your head to show someone what to do. So if you show somebody what to do without talking, you're motioning them, right? Um, let's look here. Approach. The girl approached the birds, right? In the zoo, probably. So approached, if someone approached you, that person got closer to you, okay? Um, so, or you got closer to them or it. So here the girl is approaching the birds. She's getting closer to the birds. Series. Series here, it has a whole bunch of books and it has numbers one through nine. Series is like chapters, like different parts of a story. So a series is a group of things that come one after the other. So sometimes in our favorite stories, like The Magic Tree House or um, Goosebumps, there's a lot of series to that, right? Um, so different parts or things that come one after the other. All right, selfless. Here, um, these firefighters are very selfless in this picture. If you are selfless, you care more about others than you do yourself. So that has the suffix less. That means not. So not caring so much about yourself, putting others in front of you. So if someone says that you're selfless, that's a good thing. It's the opposite of selfish. If somebody says you're selfish, that means everything's about you. It's for you, 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 you. Selfless is the opposite. It's all about the others and then me. Everyone else. It's always about everybody else and then me. You're selfless. All right. Um, and then last one, potential. This kid has potential to be a great swimmer. Potential is what you can do in the future if you work hard. The coach helps her student become a potential swimmer. 
Okay, so potential is what you can do in the future when if you work hard. So you're going to need um, you're going to need to know what these are to complete your worksheet for today. The power words match um, this one. So if you want what I would do if I were you, when I'm done watching this video, I would go back just to the first five minutes of the video and go back to where I'm going over what each word is and fill it in as you go. That will definitely help you this time. All right, so you're going to do that on your own when we're done reading the story. So let's go get to the story. Meet Brad Meltzer. Brad Meltzer learned about storytelling from his grandfather. He likes to tell all kinds of stories in his books. He writes biographies, mysteries, and comic books. He writes books for children and for adults. Mr. Meltzer has worked on television shows, too. He even had his own TV show called Brad Meltzer's Lost History. Mr. Meltzer believes that ordinary people can change the world. How would you change the world? I am Helen Keller by Brad Meltzer, so, illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos. So we know that this is a biography about Helen Keller, right? So we can make a prediction that this is going to be a story about someone named Helen Keller, and they're going to teach us maybe some great thing that she did, right? Because biographies and, and stories are probably like the biography we read yesterday about Miss Moore and how she um, made the library section for, I mean, the kids section of the library for kids. She did something great. So I, I am making the prediction that Helen Keller probably did something great in her life too. Let's read and find out. I am Helen Keller. When I was little, I was just like you. I loved to play, I loved my dog, and I loved seeing all the bright, beautiful flowers. I also loved copying people. At six months old, I could already say, How do you? How do you yourself? Tea, tea, tea. Did she just ask for tea? How'd she do that? What can I say? There's no stopping her. All right, very cool. Who is the girl in the picture? Helen Keller, right? How do you know that she is Helen Keller? What does it say? I am Helen Keller right above her her face. So we can make a we can predict that that's her. Uh do you think the story will be written in first person or third person point of view? I think it'll be written in first person point of view because the girl in the picture uses the word I. So if you use the word I, then it's first person point of view. Also here it says, I love to play. I loved my dog. I also, I, I, I. Okay, so it's going to be written in first person. All right. Does this story take place now or in the past? Looking at this picture. It's probably in the past, and we can we know that just by looking at the decor in the house. It's kind of old, uh, maybe the way they're dressed. We don't really dress that way so much anymore. Um, also, what else? There's a lot of clues here that let us know that it was maybe the furniture. It all all of this. It, it's kind it's kind of old. So maybe this took place a long time ago. Um, how do you know who says the words in the speech bubbles? In the speech bubbles, we know who's talking because of the arrow that it's the end of the speech bubble. It points to grandma. Here, the end of the speech bub bubbles point to mom. Here, they point to the chair or whoever's sitting here, right? All right, very good. Let's keep going. On the day I turned one, I started walking. Oh, and there was another word I always loved. Wah, wah. Here's your water. Just like any other kid, right? All right. Who is the girl? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, let's see. I read that as a baby, Helen Keller loved playing and copying others. On this page, I read that when Helen Keller was 19 months old, a sickness caused her... Oh, sorry. I didn't read that yet. 
but let's keep reading. But there's one thing that made me different. When I was 19 months old, I got very sick. The doctor said I wouldn't live. I did live, but the sickness made me blind and deaf. This is how I see the world. Close your eyes and lock your ears. I couldn't see anything or hear anything. That's right, nothing. So she got really sick and that took away her eyesight and her um, hearing. And remember, if you can't hear, you can't speak because you can't hear yourself talking. So um, while I'm reading this, all of a sudden she could not see or hear. That's a big change in someone's life. This tells me that Helen is going to have to change too. She will probably face many challenges as she grows up. I wonder how she will handle the challenges. Looking at this picture, who is the woman in the picture with Helen? Maybe her mother, right? Helen Keller's mother because she gives um, baby Helen a bottle. Also, she is the woman in the last page who said there was no stopping Helen. She was talking about her, so it's the same woman. So this must be her mother. Let's see what's going to happen. There's going to be a lot of changes in Miss Helen Keller's life. I know it seems scary. It was scary for me, too. Back then, people didn't know how to deal with someone who was deaf and blind. My relatives thought I was a monster. You see the way she behaves? She put her hand in my plate. She ate my food. Wah, 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 wah. She's trying to find her water. She threw the silverware, too. She's so poorly behaved. She shouldn't be here. Wow. How did Helen's relatives react to her bad behavior? Were they understanding or did they get mad? They weren't understanding. They got mad at her. They weren't trying to understand what she was going through. Right? How does Helen explain her bad behavior? She said she was frustrated because she didn't know if people cared about her. Right? She said, Dad, they didn't care about me. How do you think Helen... How do you think that Helen Keller had a good reason to act badly? Do you think she had a good reason to act that way? Yeah, she couldn't see. She wasn't doing it on purpose. She couldn't see. All right, let's keep going. They were right. I wasn't well behaved. I was extremely frustrated. In my dark world, I couldn't tell if anyone noticed me or cared about me. I couldn't see or hear what I was doing. But by the time I was five, I'd figured out small ways to communicate. To say yes, I nodded my head. For no, I shook it from side to side. To say father, I motioned to put on his glasses. For mother, I rested my hand on my face. For baby sister, I did this. And when I'd shiver like I was cold, it really meant, Helen wants ice cream. Shiver, shiver, shiver. What did the dots in this picture tell us? It shows us movement. It shows us that Helen Keller is moving, right? So she's shivering. How clever of her. But even with those signs, I couldn't get my dog, Belle, to play with me. I didn't know how to speak, so I couldn't call her. I just wanted to play with my dog. The saddest part was, I got used to a dark and silent world. People told my parents to give up on me, that I'd never be good at anything. They didn't listen, though. After reading about another blind and deaf girl, my parents found something they hadn't had since I'd gotten sick. Hope. This says there are places that teach deaf and blind children. That's what she needs. She needs a teacher. We all do. Everyone needs a teacher. Still, I had no idea what the world was about to bring me. 
what do you think Helen means when she says that she got used to the dark and the silent word world? Maybe she forgot what it was uh, able to be like to see or to hear or to speak. She kind of forgot what it felt like, right? She was now used to being alone. Why do you think she says that this was the saddest part? It is sad to think that feeling alone could be a normal part of someone's life, right? Let's see. What do you think is going to happen next? You think she's just going to live the way she is living now or she's going to do something about it? Let's read to find out. I never had a more important day. I was six years old. From the way my mother was hurrying, I knew something big was coming. I stood on the porch, waiting, feeling the sun on my face. Someone approached. I could feel footsteps. I reached out, thinking it was my mother. She pulled me into her arms. Her name was Anne Sullivan. She's the teacher who changed my life. How do you think she, she, she changed her life, Anne Sullivan, her teacher? Maybe she taught her how to deal with the sickness that she has. Maybe she taught her how to um, deal with being blind and how to communicate with being deaf, right? All right, let's see. In one of her first lessons, she gave me a toy doll. After letting me play with it, she spelled the word doll into the palm of my hand. D-O-L-L. -L. Can you feel the letters? D-O-L-L. -L. I could feel them, but I didn't know what letters or words were or how they worked. It didn't stop Miss Sullivan. All right. Why is this a big, important change or a big, important part of her life? This is a big change in her life because now finally somebody is trying to help her cope with what she's going through rather than just ignore her or not do anything for her. Now they're helping her learn to live with the disabilities that she has. What does Miss Sullivan give Helen? She gives her a doll. She gives her a doll. What was she trying to teach her? She was trying to teach her that the toy she had was called a doll. She was used she was doing that by writing in her the palm of her hand doll. Right? Looking at the speech bubbles it helps us understand who is talking or who is doing what. Look at that finger on the speech bubble. D O L L. It's it's showing us who's doing what. All right, let's keep reading. One day we were arguing as she was trying to teach me the words mug and water. I got so upset, I took my new doll and smashed it on the ground. I got angry a lot back then. It was so hard for me. I was frustrated. What do you think Helen means when she says that she, uh, she and Miss Sullivan were arguing? Maybe that Miss Sullivan couldn't understand her, right? And she couldn't understand Miss Sullivan, and they both got really frustrated with each, with each other, and it caused her to become angry and maybe um, destroy her doll. Never losing her patience, my teacher took me outside. At a nearby spout, she put my hand under the running water. In my other hand, she spelled the word W-A-T-E-R. What does Helen mean when she says that Miss Sullivan never lost her patience? That means Miss Sullivan never got upset with her for doing what she did or acting out or she's very patient with her. She never got frustrated. How does this add to our understanding of Miss Sullivan? It lets us know that Miss Sullivan was a very important person in her life because Miss Sullivan helped her cope with what she was going through very patiently. She never made her feel like it was her fault. She was a really nice woman. W-A-T-E-R. And then she spelled it again. 
W A T E R. And again, 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 W A T E R. 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 You understand, don't you? You understand. I understood. Wow, this tells us that how many times Helen didn't understand or she got frustrated. Miss Sullivan never stopped trying to help her. Right? We noticed here that they repeated W A T R so many times, showing us that uh, Miss Sullivan tried with her not for an hour, not for two, but almost all day. And we can tell because look at the sun going down now. It's nighttime and she's still trying to teach her one simple concept, which is water. She never gave up on her. She was very patient with her until she understood it. From there, I realized that everything had a name. Every object I touched seemed to burst to life. Mother, lamp, dog, table, father, sister, teacher. And now, when I wrote words in my teacher's hand, I had someone who could understand me. What has Helen learned? She's learned that everything has a name, and this is important because now she can communicate with her teacher by writing words in her hand. This will change Helen's life. I feel like it will be, le she'll feel less alone. She'll be less frustrated because she can finally communicate with people. When you're learning something new, it's often hard. I started with words. My vocabulary grew fast. Eventually, I learned the meaning of the word love. I had given my teacher some flowers. So she spelled into my hand, I love Helen. Confused, I asked her, what is love? It is here, she spelled, while tapping at my heart. I was still confused. It was hard to understand something I couldn't touch. Why is it hard for, a Hel for Helen to understand what the word love means? Love is a feeling. Helen can't hold it and learn its name like she can with other objects. It's something that you feel. It made no sense. Why couldn't my teacher show me love? But then she explained. You can't touch clouds, but you can feel rain and know how happy flowers are to get water. That is how love is. You can't touch love, but you can feel how happy it makes you. There, in that moment, my whole world changed. It was as if there were invisible lines that stretched between me and everyone else in my life. Close your eyes. You can feel it too. Your connection to your family and friends. Still? Okay. So, it makes me think she will now... I'm sorry. Um... She now understands what feelings are and how that feelings connect everyone to the people around them. So how does this add to your understanding of Helen? It makes me think she will now be able to describe how she feels when she is frustrated or upset. She will be able to say what she is feeling that when what she's feeling and when she is feeling that way. She's starting to understand the connection in people's lives. Life was never easy. Without sight, I couldn't see people's faces. Without sound, I couldn't hear their voices. But one of my greatest breakthroughs came when I learned to do what you're doing right now. 
reading. Read without eyes? How's she going to do that? You'll read with your fingers. On this cardboard, you'll feel raised dots. The dots make letters. The letters make words. This is the word for doll. What do you learn from the text on this page? How do you learn from the picture and the speech bubbles? The story tells me that Helen learned to read just like me. The speech bubbles um, pointing to Miss Sullivan's hand and the picture shows how Helen learned to read, right? Who is the other girl in the picture and why do you think she is there? I think she is a reader like me. She asks the same question I would ask. How did Helen learn to read even though she was blind and she couldn't see? To practice, I'd match each word with its object and make sentences. This was my favorite game. We played it for hours. See if you can find the sentence. Girl is in wardrobe. From there, I started reading real books, just like you. The only difference was my books were in Braille, which is a series of raised dots that you read with your fingers. These dots spell my name. H-E-L-E-N. Want to read your name in Braille? Here's the alphabet. What's the difference between how we read and how Helen reads? We read with our eyes and Helen reads with her fingers, right? Why do you think Braille is so important to Helen? The raised letters are a way for Helen to read, right? I think Helen will now be able to learn new things and maybe even go to school. Let's see. To make reading even more fun, my teacher took me outside. She knew I loved feeling the sun on my face and smelling the pine needles. I read my book so many times, I wore down the raised dots. There were the Arabian Nights, Robinson Crusoe, and one of my favorites, Little Women. In those pages, I met brave boys and girls who could hear and see. I am not afraid of storms, for I am learning how to sail my ship. One of Miss Sullivan's best lessons came when she showed how plants grow. Feel these buds. Some buds open fast, others open slowly. A flower can only bloom if it's watered. When I was nine years old, Let's talk about how does the quote from the book Helen is reading connect to her own life. Helen has learned how to read and communicate just like someone learns how to sail a ship. Sailors are not afraid of storms because they know how to sail a ship. Helen is not afraid of things that may happen in her life because she knows how to communicate. I wanted to learn how to speak. Even Miss Sullivan was worried about teaching me. She thought I'd get frustrated. But nothing would stop me now. To help me, Miss Sullivan took me to a teacher named Sarah Fuller, who would put my hand to her face and let me feel her tongue and lips as she made each sound. Yes, Helen, feel each sound, like the vibrating strings on a piano. In an hour, I learned the letters M, P, A, S, T and I. Ma! Why was Miss Sullivan worried that Helen would get frustrated if she tried to learn to speak? She thought it would be hard because Helen could not hear what speaking sounded like. But instead, Helen wasn't going to let anything stop her. It took her only an hour to learn to say six different sounds. What does that tell us about Helen? She's very smart and she is willing to learn. She wants to learn. Now I could call my dog and she'd come to me. At my seventh lesson, I spoke this sentence. The one sentence that I'd repeat over and over. I am not dumb now. As I got older, I didn't just learn to speak English. I learned French and German. For college, I wanted to go to Radcliffe at Harvard University. Maybe she should wait another year. Deaf and blind people don't go to college. I'm going.
I wouldn't argue. There's no stopping her. At Harvard, most of my books weren't available in Braille, so Miss Sullivan spelled out many of the textbooks in my hand. That's how much I loved learning. And that's how patient and selfless Miss Sullivan was. I became the first deaf and blind person to earn a college degree. I wouldn't be the last. As I grew older, I wrote 12 books and visited 34 countries. But the most important thing I did was to make sure that other people with disabilities could get the same education I had. My family had the money to hire a private teacher. Not everyone is that lucky. We need to give every person an equal chance. There she is! She sounds so strong! Today, thousands of deaf and blind students enroll in universities, thanks to the work Helen did. Riding a horse? How does she do that? What is Helen doing here? She's giving a speech at her college graduation. She's saying that it is important for everyone to get a chance to go to college just like she did. And the people admired her. They liked what she was saying. One person says this, she sounds strong. Another says that thousands of deaf and blind students enroll in universities because of Helen. How does this add to your understanding of how Helen inspired others? It helps me see how Helen proved to people with disabil disabilities are just as able to study and learn as anyone else. She showed it was possible to overcome challenges with hard work. In my life, they said I was different. They said I'd never be normal. But the truth is, there's no such thing as a normal life. Every one of us is like a flower that must be watered. Every one of us is full of potential. And every one of us can overcome obstacles. Look at me. Hear my words. I may not be able to see, but I have vision. I may not be able to hear, but I have a voice. She's the first statue in the U.S. Capitol that's of a child. I really want to know, how'd you do all that stuff? I just decided I could. Think of your life as a hill that must be climbed. There's no correct path to get to the top. We all zigzag in our own ways. At some point, you'll slip. You'll fall. You'll tumble back down again. But if you get back up and keep climbing, I promise you, where are the people in this picture? They're at the U.S. Capitol, and they're from now or the past. They are from now. They are wearing clothes like we wear today. One girl has a guide dog. A boy has a modern-looking wheelchair. In the picture, children are standing in front of statue of Helen Keller and learning about her life. One girl is even asking Helen questions. You will reach the top. Don't let anything hold you back. Our lives are what we make of them. There will always be obstacles, but there will always be ways around them. I am Helen Keller, and I won't let anything stop me. I am going to think more about the lesson I've learned from Helen's story. One is that communicating with others is really important. Even though Helen had people who loved her and took care of her, she felt alone because she couldn't communicate with them. It makes me think that I can make someone feel better just by talking to them and showing them I care. Also because she was blind and deaf, Helen had to work extra hard to learn to read and speak. It was not easy for her, but she never quit. This is important to me because it shows that you can do anything you set your mind to. And that's what she did. She did what she set her mind to. That's awesome. Good for you. All right. So what we're going to do next is let's talk about this a little bit. Synthesize. Why do you think Helen Keller's life still inspires people today? Well, she overcame a really big challenge in her life. She became the first college graduate 
to uh, graduate college that was deaf and blind, right? Um, so she inspires a lot of people with disabilities just because you have a little less than other people or you can't do that doesn't make you unable. It, you know, find a way to do it like I did. She inspires people. Who's telling the story? Helen Keller is telling the story. Why do you think the author chose to write the text in first person? Maybe to give us the point of view or the perspective of Helen Keller. Because from her point of view, things may be a lot different than another's, another person's point of view, right? Why is learning to spell water a very important event in Helen's life? In that picture, they showed us that she tried writing water so many times and she tried and tried and tried and did, she never gave up, right? It was a very important part of her life. All right, so because she overcame a really big challenge, it was challenging for her to understand. So what, right now what you're going to do is you're going to do the last page in your reading packet, which is I am Helen Keller uh, module seven quiz, okay? It's, it's not too bad. It's five questions. You can use your book to help you find the answers. I'm sorry for the long video, but the story was long. So go ahead and get started in your work, and that's all you're doing today. You're just going to do the Power Match vocabulary and the Helen Keller quiz, and you're done for today with HMH. I'll see you later. Bye.